Hello. I've picked a place to be buried. Where's that? Not far from here. On a hill, beneath a tree, overlooking a pond. Very serene. A good place to think. Are you planning on thinking there? I'm planning on being dead there. He chuckles. I chuckle. Will you visit? Visit? Just come and talk. Make it a Tuesday. You always come on Tuesdays. We're Tuesday people. Right. Tuesday people. Come to talk then? He has grown so weak so fast. Look at me, he says. I'm looking. You'll come to my grave to tell me your problems? My problems? Yes. And you'll give me answers? I'll give you what I can. Don't I always? I picture his grave on the hill overlooking the pond, some little nine-foot piece of earth where they will place him, cover him with dirt, put a stone on top. Maybe in a few weeks? Maybe in a few days? I see myself sitting there alone, arms across my knees, staring into space. It won't be the same, I say, not being able to hear you talk. Ah, talk. He closed his eyes and smiles. Tell you what, after I'm dead, you talk, and I'll listen. The 13th Tuesday, we talk about the perfect day. Moore wanted to be cremated. He had discussed it with Charlotte, and they decided it was the best way. The rabbi from Brandeis, Al Axelrad, a longtime friend whom they chose to conduct the funeral service, had come to visit Maury, and Maury told them of his cremation plans. And Al? Yes. Make sure they don't overcook me. The rabbi was stunned, but Maury was able to joke about his body now. The closer he got to the end, the more he saw it as a mere shell, a container of the soul. It was withering to useless skin and bones anyhow, which made it easier to let go. We are so afraid of the sight of death, Maury told me when I sat down. I adjusted the microphone on his collar, but it kept flopping over. Maury coughed. He was coughing all the time now. I read a book the other day. It said as soon as someone dies in a hospital, they pull the sheets up over their head and they wheel the body to some chute and push it down. They can't wait to get it out of their sight. People act as if death is contagious. I fumbled with the microphone. Maury glanced at my hands. It's not contagious, you know. Death is as natural as life. It's part of the deal we made. He coughed again, and I moved back and waited, always braced for something serious. Maury had been having bad nights lately, frightening nights. He could sleep only a few hours at a time before violent hacking spells woke him. The nurses would come into the bedroom, pound him on the back, try to bring up the poison. Even if they got him breathing normally again, normally, meaning with the help of the oxygen machine, the fight left him fatigued the whole next day. The oxygen tube was up his nose now. I hated the sight of it. To me, it symbolized helplessness. I wanted to pull it out. Last night, Moore said softly. Yes, last night. I had a terrible spell. It went on for hours, and I really wasn't sure I was going to make it. No breath. No end to the choking. At one point, I started to get dizzy, and then I felt a certain peace. I felt that I was ready to go. His eyes widened. Mitch? It was the most incredible feeling, the sensation of accepting what was happening, being at peace. I was thinking about a dream I had last week where I was crossing a bridge into something unknown, being ready to move on to whatever's next. But you didn't. Moira waited a moment. He shook his head slightly. No, I didn't. But I felt that I could. Do you understand? That's what we're all looking for, a certain peace with the idea of dying. If we know in the end that we can ultimately have that peace of dying, then we can finally do the really hard thing, which is make peace with living. He asked to see the hibiscus plant on the ledge behind him. I cupped it in my hand and held it up near his eyes. He smiled. It's natural to die, he said again. The fact that we make such a big hullabaloo over it all is because we don't see ourselves as part of nature. We think because we're human, we're something above nature. He smiled at the plant. We're not. Everything that gets born dies. He looked at me. Do you accept that? Yes. All right, he said. Now here's the payoff. Here is how we are different from these wonderful plants and animals. As long as we can love each other and remember the feeling of, of love we had, we can die without ever really going away. All the love you created is still there. All the memories are still there. You live on in the hearts of everyone you have touched and nurtured while you were here. His voice was raspy, which usually meant he needed to stop for a while. 
I placed the plant back on the ledge and went to shut off the tape recorder. This is the last sentence more I got out before I did. Death ends a life, not a relationship.